Welcome to the second stop of the Free Ride World Tour 2011. Once again, you'll be watching the most elite free riders battling it out on steep and impressive mountains for the title of world champion. Tension is rising as this second contest will already begin to separate the contenders from the pretenders. The Freeride World Tour is composed of six competitions held in the most prestigious freeriding destinations. But only the most accomplished riders will make their way to the finals in Verbier and get a chance to become the next Freeride World Champions. The season opened in the heart of the Mont Blanc region with the Freeride de Chamonix. The bar was set very high in this inaugural competition with riders pushing the envelope in both ski and snowboard categories and launching what will prove to be a highly competitive season. French snowboarder Xavier Delarue looked as strong as ever and took the lead with a phenomenal run, paving his way to a potential fourth consecutive world champion title. In Chamonix, the French simply dominated the field with Aurelien Ducrot taking gold in the ski category with his very fast and technical line. Delarue and Ducrot became instant favorites for the title. But there is still a long way to go as the tour is only now entering its second stage at the Freeride Engadine Semeritz. Located in Switzerland, in the heart of the Alps, the Engadin Valley is one of the most picturesque and beautiful regions of the country. Whilst offering an inspiring panorama over the surrounding mountains, it is also home to Corvatch Peak with its intimidating north face. Snow conditions throughout the Alps are under average so far this season, but the Engadin is a rare exception. With the Corvatch culminating at more than 3,300 meters, the cold temperatures of its north face appear to offer the contest a perfect haven. As the clouds begin to dissipate, riders begin their inspection of the face, combing for the best possible line. A short hike then takes them up to the top of the Corvatch contest face and they have a bird eye view from the start gate area. We're sitting here, I'm uh, we're up on the Corvatch uh, doing our inspection. Uh, we had a look at it from the bottom and now we've hiked up here to the top, uh, traversed over a bit. Uh, we're having a look at the face from the top here and uh, there's also a cable car from where you can see the whole venue. So, uh, so yeah, we're fully prepared. Conditions on contest day are ideal with good visibility over the Corvatch. With the start gate standing on the ridge line at more than 3,000 meters and the finish 500 meters below, this is going to be one demanding run from the riders and potentially the longest of the competition venues of the series. And so we start off with bib number one, Sebastian Hanneman from Germany. He's in a tricky situation after a disappointing 15th place in Chamonix, so he knows he'll need a much better result today. And here he goes. He attempts a backflip but can't stick the landing. Oh, a couple of tumbles here and he's back on his feet right before the other cliff, but it's just not going to be a good enough start for his run. Hanneman has now reached the bottom section of the face and it looks like he might have something up his sleeve. And he concludes his run with this massive cliff drop. That's very impressive, although he knows the judges will dock him for his lack of control in the top section. Oh, I lost it there. Fuck. Next up, we have Austrian snowboarder Mitch Telderer. He got fifth in Chamonix and is a former winner of the Verbier Extreme. With a venue like today's, he's got the skills and experience to make the podium a reality. Oh, a slight mistake here in this narrow couloir, but nothing too serious. He continues his run with good fluidity and that's exactly what the judges are looking for. And 
now it's full speed to the finish line, and that's a good run from the Austrian rider. He gets 7.1 points from the judges. <laughs> Getting ready in the start gate now, Torgrim Vole from Norway. He's new on the tour, and he's a very talented rider, but he has yet to prove that he has what it takes to pressure the top riders in this heated competition. He finished only 12th in Chamonix and knows that he has to step up his game here in Engadin. Well, he's entered the left side of the face, and so far it's a pretty smooth run, and he approaches a big double cliff here. That was one heavy impact. The landing's not perfect, but Volde stays on his feet. And another jump here, well landed this time. Volde's keeping his speed and fluidity intact. He's headed directly towards another double cliff drop. Perfectly executed, that's an excellent run for the Norwegian rider. He earns himself a solid 7.7 .7 from the judges. I'm sort of happy with my run. I felt I had to make a better performance than I did in Chamonix. Since my line was a bit more difficult today, I hope, I'm hoping for a better position for sure. So we're back up to the top of the Corvette now, and it's Xavier Delarue getting prepared. This three-time snowboard world champion shined on the first competition in Chamonix and has a solid shot at his fourth world title if he can pull it off again today. First jump here with an uncharacteristic landing for Delarue. He continues with a series of turns. And another jump here, no problem for the Frenchman. He drops into a narrow couloir now, finding it difficult. He is down and he's in the white room, totally covered with slough. Delarue is back on his feet, but his run is clearly not going the way he'd planned. This is a big disappointment from the reigning champion who really just couldn't find his mark on the north face of the Corvatch today. Yeah, the, the snow is really firm. I struggled all the way down. I, I was riding at my limit. But it's much more compact than I thought up there. You crank some speed and uh, it's just hard to keep in control. It was, whew, it really wasn't my day. Yeah, I was scared and uh, riding on the edge the whole time, so no, it wasn't a good run. You always need to adapt to snow conditions. That's, that's the challenge, and obviously that's something I didn't manage to do today. And with a score of only 4.9, Delarue has slipped far down in the rankings, leaving the door wide open for his opponents. This means the judges will pay very close attention to our next competitor, Matt Annettes from the USA. And first jump for Matt Annettes, a good landing. He's delivering a very smooth line, very fluid, and that will certainly pay off with the judging. Well, that's a squeaky clean top section here from Annette's with a good choice of line. No major jumps, but no mistakes either, and that could well make the difference today. One last cliff jump and he is off to the finish line with an excellent run and 8.2 points. Sick. I've had some troubles in competitions and today I put my line together and it felt good. Every day I compete against myself and today I did all right. <laughs> so we now have a new leader in the snowboard class with Matt Annette. In the ski category, it's Aurelien Ducro who's about to drop in. After his win in Chamonix, confidence level is maxed out, and he's got a unique chance here to distance himself from the other skiers. Go. 
And he's out of the gate now. Ducrow's coming in from behind the ridge and jumps out over the face. Oh, a big fall for the Frenchman. He lands directly on a big rock. But he waves to the crowd. He says he's all right, and it looks as though he's skiing down to the finish without any further risk. He knows he won't be climbing the podium in Engadine here today. Well, that's a big disappointment for Ducrow, but fortunately he's all right after such a colossal slam. Well, the idea was to jump from the cornice into a narrow couloir just to my left of the rock face up the top. But in fact, I launched a little bit late and uh, landed on the rocks below. It was a very big mistake, a monumental error like I've never had before. It's really just a terrible way to represent free riding. The balance we are trying to achieve using our scoring method accounts for riders who want to take chances, but it is not meant to encourage anyone to do things they are not 100% sure they can do, essentially to push themselves, but to ski within their ability. Aurelien is certainly one of the best riders, but today he just pushed himself beyond his limit. Yeah, for sure the pressure's on. I burnt my one mistake for the season, but I'm moving on. I won in Chamonix. I feel good on my skis. I was just a bit off line up there, that's all. I'm confident with my skiing. I'll be competing in the USA. Maybe I'll take a little less risk, but I'm still going to ski fast like I know how to do. And next up, another skier from France, Adrian Quarier. He started this season beautifully back in Chamonix with a run that earned him second place. This is a phenomenal comeback for Quarier. He suffered from a terrible accident back in 2009, which left him with a broken body and could easily have ended his skiing career altogether. Yeah, two years ago I, I had an accident. I tumbled uh, 150 meters down the rock face and I broke my back in multiple places. Uh, no one thought I would ever come back. Last summer I trained really, really hard uh, to have no pain in my back and to be back on top of my game. So here in the first competition it worked out. I, I, I couldn't hope for anything better. <laughs> Yeah, this injury really made me ask myself a few questions, like uh, if I really wanted to continue to compete or not. It was a bad fall. I had a lot of time to analyze it. I had the video, I had everything to try to understand how it happened, uh, why it happened. But I realized I was focusing too much on consequences instead of just living for the moment. So now I know why I'm here competing and, and just how lucky I am to be able to ski again. I, I can't imagine entering a competition thinking that the best I'll ever be able to do is second. Clearly my objective is to win the World Tour this season. Wow, what incredible determination from Quarier. Not only is he making a spectacular comeback on skis, but he has surpassed all expectations to become extremely competitive this season, as evidenced by his second place back in Chamonix. And so working his way to the far left of the face, he is off. Quarier is your typical big mountain skier, very solid technically, and he's looking for the steeper parts of the face where he can let loose his skills. It's going very well so far for Quarier in this technical section. He's laying down a fluid run and gives a solid impression of control, which is another very important criteria for the judges. Quarier drops into a pocket here and oh, bobbles the landing. That's going to cost him some crucial points for the podium. And he concludes his run with another big cliff drop. Well played by the Frenchman. You can see he's very happy on his run out. So Quarier earns a 6.1 from the judges today. That's a good score, but not what it's going to take to reach the podium. JT Holmes is our next skier to try his luck up on the Corvatch. After a difficult 2010 season and several crashes, JT admitted he was looking for redemption this winter. And he starts off with a big old cliff jump and an impeccable landing. 
he continues his way down with a very fast line and spices it up with a few more jumps. An excellent run from the American, far better than his very average performance back in Chamonix. I want to be one of the best damn skiers in the world. And uh, yeah. after Chamonix, it was very apparent that I wasn't. <laughs> so I have some work to do. And I think it's really good for uh, athletes to eat some humble pie every once in a while. And you come and qualify for the Freeride World Tour and go up against these guys, that's going to be humbling. <laughs> and our next snowboarder will be Flo Orley from Austria. He took a break from competition in 2010, but he's looking very strong in his comeback season. With Delarue far up in the ranking, he also knows he'll have to turn up the juice today. And indeed, this is a solid run with good mix of jumps, speed, and technical prowess. Orly may lack a little bit of originality though, as this line has already been seen today. He's now charging full speed to the finish and gets a 6.2 for his run. Next competitor in the ski category is Eric Sunerheim from Sweden. Although he's a newcomer on the tour, he has already confirmed his status as a contender with a solid fourth place in Chamonix. He's starting his runoff directly into the steep section and drops a huge cliff, perfectly landed. Sunderheim is clearly not holding back today. Another jump here and lots of speed, but Sunderheim must stay in control. This is something, as you now know, that the judges are paying a lot of attention to. And that's another good performance from Sunderheim after his fourth place in Chamonix. He came there as a wild card, and today in Engadin, he definitely earned his spot among the world's top riders. The rock at the end? Yeah. Maybe double. Oh, yeah? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, Next up just happens to come from the same Swedish village as Sunderheim, the small resort town of Ora. It's Henrik Vinstead in the gate, and after his fifth place in Chamonix, he knows he'll have to step up his game for a shot at the title this season. And here we go with the Swede, ex-world champion from 2008. He starts his run with his big cliff and a good landing. Snowpack is definitely firmer than expected and riders are finding their landings really fast. But it's no problem for Vinstead, who's handling the mixed terrain just fine. He's now headed into that same narrow couloir where earlier Delarue had a few problems. But Vinstead manages it very well and he tops it off with a nice jump. So far, this is probably the best run of the day in both categories. One more very clean jump and Vinstead is at full speed to the finish line. Well, that was an impressive display of solid, controlled riding from the Swede, and it shows with an excellent score of 8.4 from the judges. But in the finish area, Vinstead rolls on the ground in pain as he unfortunately has bruised several ribs during his run. And we're back up the top of the Corvatch now for our last competitor of the day, veteran Seb Michaud from France. At age 38, he's still one of the strongest riders in the field. After an injury back in 2010, he's begun this season slowly with only a 16th place in Chamonix, so he'll really want to clear out the cobwebs today. Michaud lands his first big cliff perfectly. He's really flowing through here, and another nice jump. Just as Winstead before, he's headed for that narrow couloir now. It's tricked a lot of riders today. But no problem for Michaud. So far, this is an excellent run. Ah, 
A ah, little mistake here. What a pity. Losing a bit of control, and Michaud is now mad at himself, and he's right because this is undermining a run which has so far been near perfect. But it's not over yet. And Michaud lands a clean backflip. That's his signature move. No one does backflips better than him on a free ride face. Reaching the finish line, he lands a decent score of 7.3, but is visibly disappointed after that mistake. A real pity on such a nice run. Yeah, yeah, yeah you jump more than 15 meters high and you land well, and then, uh, and then in a couloir where it goes a bit fast, uh, voila, you end up in the back seat and a bit out of control. Yeah, I'm bummed. Here are the podium results, and it's Madinets from the USA taking first place in the snowboard class, marking his first ever win on the Freeride World Tour. He's followed by the three Austrians, Telderer, Orly, and Zipser. The French, who dominated the Chamonix event, have now slid down the rankings. The biggest disappointment comes from Xavier Delarue, who was only able to reach as high as eighth. Well, it's great to put pressure on Xavier. He's, uh, you know, he's an amazing rider. He's so strong and he's been dominating the sport for ever. I think somebody told me I may be the leader on the tour where he ended up. So that would be good. He, uh, he's chasing me now. <laughs> and indeed, Matt Annette becomes the new current leader of the world ranking in snowboard ahead of Delarue. Telderer and Charlet immediately follow with only a small margin between them. It's still a very open game in the snowboard class with no rider having firmly established their lead to date. In the ski category, Henrik Vinstead takes the win but has to skip the ceremony due to his injury. Torgrim Vole gets to his first podium ever on the tour and Michaud secures a bittersweet third, knowing he could have taken the win without that small mistake. JT Holmes comes in at fourth place while Sunderheim in fifth proves he means business. Quarier was plagued by errors, but his solid riding rounds out the top six. The following day, Henrik Vinstead is already in better shape and tells us about what happened during his winning run. I chose a pretty big cliff on the top of my run. When I landed, it was, uh, I hurt myself directly. Then I could feel it throughout the whole run, you know, uh, all the cliffs and turns I made after was just so painful. Coming down to the finish area, I, I couldn't breathe. It's just, it was almost panic. My, my muscles and my, my chest didn't work at all, so then I got an ambulance down to uh, the hospital. It was kind of crazy. They put me almost to sleep in the, in the ambulance because I was in so much pain. Then I dreamt about uh, colorful avalanches and <laughs> it's just uh, hallucinating there. You know, when you're in, in the competition, in your, you know, you have so much adrenaline and you're so focused. You don't really feel the pain so much. You can only feel that it's something happens, and you know, and it's not so good. But, but I kept to my plan, and you know, I did my line, and it was a good payoff. So they told me now just to, you know, rest and work on my breathing, and then it should be okay within a couple of weeks. So I'm staying positive and hope to be back for the next contest. With his win here in Semeritz, Vinstead takes the lead just ahead of Adrian Quarier. Ducro hangs on in third despite his underperformance. Volley and Sonderheim complete the top five, a remarkable performance for these two newcomers on the tour. So the pressure is on for Aurelien Ducro, who no longer leads the tour after his crash. It's going to be a tough battle with Adrian Quarier and Henrik Vinstead now locking horns for the world title. Reigning champion Xavier Delarue has released his stranglehold on the top spot, leaving the field wide open for his competition. Madanets laid down his cards on the Corvatch today and walks away a winner. His first place gives him some breathing room coming into our next crucial competition where he'll be on his home turf in the USA. Don't miss the third episode of the Freeride World Tour 2011.